So welcome everybody to the second expertise symposium. Uh, the, for those who, who perhaps weren't here, the first symposium uh, was two years ago, October 2020. And it was initially planned just to be uh, locally here at UE in Bristol in the UK, uh, maybe about 30 people um, face to face. Um, but as I'm sure you all remember, that was very early on in the, uh, the pandemic. Um, pretty much everybody was working from home. So we had to move online um, and with fantastic support from my colleagues here at UWE, uh, we ran the uh, event online. Uh, we used a virtual learning environment to do that um, and we had over 500 registrants um, from across across the globe, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, and so it kind of for me, it was a, you know, really opened up the opportunities for doing online events. Um, that went really well. We had a, a book that came out of that, um, developing expertise, um, and uh, and we have our second symposium here today. We have uh, the last time I looked, over three hundred people registered. Of course, they're not all going to be here all at the same time. We've got people from lots of different time zones, and we've got activities happening um, next week as well. Um, but a quick shout out from a list. And if I if I've missed your country out from this list, I do apologise because I pulled this off um, a few days ago. So you may have registered since I got the list. But I'm going to do a shout out. We have people from Australia, Canada, China, Gibraltar, Ireland, Portugal, Saudi Arabia, Scotland, Singapore, South Africa, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, the USA, and of course all across the United Kingdom. So welcome everybody. Uh, whether you're here here now or will be joining in different ways over the next next few days. Um, throughout today and um, uh, through our asynchronous presentations, which we'll be looking at um, in the watch parties next week, we've got 30 presentations from over 50 different contributors. Um, so a really rich uh, variety uh, of presentations and perspectives all around this notion of expertise and artistry of teaching. Uh, if you are into Twitter and want to tweet, um, I've been using the hashtag uh, expertise LTHG, so that's expertise learning and teaching higher education. Uh, do feel free to, to tweet uh, using that hashtag and, and any other any other tags that you'd like to use. Um, if you um, want to want to get in contact with me, know anything more about what's going on, uh, my email address is there as well. So I'm really happy to um, have conversations with people um, if you're interested in taking this further. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping. So uh, we do have a lot of people here uh, throughout the day. So please keep your microphones off. Um, you're welcome to leave videos on, but if you're finding that slowing, slowing up your internet connection, then you know that's, that's fine to have a video off. So if we could put all questions and comments through the chat box, please. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on that and the session chairs will be keeping an eye on that. Um, so that we can then feed back questions and comments to the speakers. Um, but please don't, um, <clears throat> please try and keep your microphones off just because we've just got so many people there. It could get quite chaotic. Now we're going to be using the heart emoji reaction to signal timings for the speakers. So I'm just going to show that there. Um, so it's just a kind of a subtle flash to them. They've got sort of two minutes to go and then time's up. <clears throat> so as uh, the audience, if you would like to react using those reaction emojis, please, can you just use um, thumbs up or uh, applause? What are the other ones? Laugh if you want to, or um, the surprised one. Who knows what we're going to need, need today? But if you could avoid the heart emoji, that would be really helpful. And then we can just use that just for our presenters. Um, you can put any emojis you like in the chat box. Um, it's just the ones that, that pop up. <laughs> Feel free to have a bit of a practice with those now. I can see a few of them coming up. Um, we've got a slight change to today's program, uh, just a small one. Um, unfortunately, due to illness, our penultimate speaker um, at 10 to 4 is unavailable. So Caitlin Kite is going to be bringing forward her presentation to that time and we'll wrap everything up at 4.30. Um, there's a pr uh, programme for the day in the calendar invite and that's been updated to account for that. Um, but we do have um, we, we do have Caitlin's abstract still in the programme and of course if, if her work is of interest do get in touch with her um, if you want to know more about what she's doing. OK, so 
before I do a sort of a br brief introduction to sort of ideas around expertise, I just want to do some thank yous because um, this is this event um, and the previous event has involved a, a, a large number of people who have just, just been absolutely amazing. So for Symposium 1, I want to say thank you to all the contributors, uh, the facilitators and back office support um, who helped with both the symposium and the book. We had over 36 contributions to the book um, and, and everyone was absolutely fantastic in meeting deadlines and coming up with some really, really interesting and, and high quality uh, chapters. Thank you, of course, to all of our contributors and all of you who've registered for this symposium today. Um, and also to CEDA, the Staff and Education Development Association, um, for uh, who helped with the publication of the book. Um, and we also had a recent series of blog posts uh, through CEDA um, around expertise. Um, massive thank you to the symposium, the second symposium planning group, um, who helped with reviewing the abstracts. Uh, they devised the program format, their chairing sessions, um, and they've also agreed to co-edit um, a potential second book. So that's a big thanks to Rich Bale, Erica Corradini, Diane Ganaway, Leo Morantes Africano, Sean Mudd, and Jackie Potter. So thank you. But I think our biggest thank you, or my biggest thank you, is to Pete Fossey um, and the University of Warwick for hosting the symposium through Teams um, and supporting all the background um, with Teams. So thank you so much, Pete, for that. You've uh, you know, made this happen. It's fabulous. Okay, so I just want to do. Um, a very quick bit of background to the ideas around expertise and artistry, um, in case you're not quite so familiar with that. So I've been using the term expertise as sort of an alternative or a complement to excellence. Excellence is, is everywhere. We're all trying to be excellent in everything we do um, in higher education. But the difficulty I have with it, if you look at the derivation of the word um, in English, it comes from the Latin meaning sort of outstanding or beyond or lofty. And actually by, by der derivation definition, that means it's not available to all. We can't all be outstanding. We can't all be above average. So it's not something we can necessarily all achieve. Also, and particularly um, in, in England, but I'm sure elsewhere, it tends to be measured by outputs. So we measure it by student satisfaction or graduate outcomes um, here in, in the UK. Um, and that doesn't really help us that much in thinking about, so what do we do as teachers when we're supporting our students' learning? Also, I feel that that uh, um, concept of excellence as being outstanding is perhaps quite individual and also maybe a bit competitive. We're all trying to be more outstanding than the others. By contrast, expertise is much more about a process. So looking again at the derivation, um, it's a past participle of the verb that means to try in Latin, which is also the derivation of the words experience and experiment. So it's potentially a process, or it is a process, that's potentially available to everybody if they want to engage with it. And certainly research, um, a lot of research that I've read around the development of expertise and elite performers and the notion of talent um, is actually vast, vast majority of people reach that really high performing um, place through practice and hard work rather than through sort of some underlying kind of natural talent. So potentially this kind of notion of expertise is available to everybody and we can kind of all move along that expertise um, scale. Um, uh, so it's all yeah, possible for everybody. Also, if we look at the very, very broad literature around expertise, the notion of expertise is characterised by inputs. So it's about the, the experts themselves. What are their characteristics? What are they doing? How are they practising? How are they thinking that enables that expertise? So that's, I think, a lot more helpful um, for individuals who want to develop their own expertise, um, for people like educational developers who are supporting others, because it's not just about the output, it's about the input as well. And also expertise is domain specific. So being an expert in one area doesn't necessarily mean you're an expert in another area, um, which I think is particularly poignant in higher education, because I think we still have the assumption in some places that if you're an expert in your particular subject or field, then you must naturally be a good teacher. Um, that's not always the case. Very rarely the case. Um, so 
being that kind of domain specific, I think it brings with it perhaps more of a humble approach rather than the sort of individual excellence outstanding approach, because it necessarily needs to be collaborative. So, for example, you might have expertise as a surgeon, but actually your ability to perform high quality surgery is compromised if you don't have your um, assistants, your nurses, your anaesthetists um, and other experts around you. So that's kind of where the whole notion of expertise comes from. And there's a, a huge literature around expertise, uh, both in general and in a range of disciplines. There's books on uh, the science and neuroscience of expertise. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating, fascinating topic. <clears throat> Let's bring us towards the, um, uh, the topic for the theme for today. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. The theme for today, which is about artistry of teaching. So, um, Looking broadly at the characteristics of expertise in general, um, I kind of had a look at well, what do these mean for in teaching? And I've got these kind of three broad areas, which are sort of interacting as a Venn diagram, but actually they're all very much kind of intertwined with each other. So there's knowledge about your field, which we can consider as pedagogical content knowledge. Professional learning and development, as I've already said, that practice, that professional learning is really important for the development of expertise. But then there's this other bit, this kind of intangible aspect of expertise, which um, we've talked about as art history. Um, and it's those kind of um, other areas that enable us or other skills that enable us to uh, improvise, to react in the classroom, to develop relationships and so on. And we'll be exploring that in lots of different ways during the symposium. Um, if you're interested in um, looking at some of the interviews that I that kind of formed background to some of this. I interviewed national teaching fellows in the UK um, and I've got some really interesting case studies from them, just one page case studies of how they've developed their teaching. Um, and there's some really interesting ideas there about their approaches. Um, those are all available. I'll stick the link in the chat box shortly. And there's also a link to the YouTube videos from the first symposium if you want to go back and have a look at those. Um, and of course, there's our publication on developing expertise. So I'll pop those links in the chat box uh, shortly. Um, so if you want to sort of find out more about all of this, that's all available to you. Um, I pose this as a kind of a Venn diagram, uh, though I did say it's all kind of been connected anyway. But the Venn diagram kind of asks a question, well, what happens at the intersections? And um, so these are just a cut of sort of a some suggestion really about what those might be. So that link between professional learning and content knowledge, that could be scholarship. The link between artistry and professional learning, could that be Schoen's reflection in action where we're improvising in the moment? But pedagogical content knowledge and artistry, I think is a bit different. Um, and I'm gonna skip forward, I'm conscious of time and um, I'll explain why in a moment. So what next for expertise? Um, I don't think it really matters what model we use. Um, I think it's the conversations that are important, the different ways of thinking about um, high quality teaching in higher education. Um, but this model does give us some different ways of thinking about it and different approaches when we're thinking about professional development for our colleagues. Um, and I think it really does emphasise that um, the importance of professional learning and professional development. And I think if higher education institutions to achieve their missions of excellence in higher education, we need to foster and enable an environment and a culture of professional learning for teaching that's integrated into everyday practice. And without this um, sort of active institutional level commitment, expertise in teaching will only ever be a subculture of the few. And that was really kind of my conclusion to, uh, to the book, um, that really this needs to be um, embedded within culture and within institutions. Um, talking of cultures, one of the questions I often get asked is, does this work for other cultures? So obviously from myself, um, I'm um, based in UK higher education. I probably bring a very Western centric view to it. My initial reaction to that is, well, I'm not specifying any particular pedagogies. Um, so maybe it is generic, maybe it could apply to other cultures, but I don't know. It's really a question. and I'd be really interested to explore that at a later date. Um, and of course, um, very conscious of time, <laughs> of course, um, 
the next question is where will the next symposium be held? If you're interested in hosting, uh, if you'd like to be involved in this, um, if you'd like, particularly uh, if we find ways of um, integrating with different time zones, do get in touch. It will be fabulous to, to think about that, start thinking about that. So this is our schedule for um, the week. Today we've got uh, three sets of uh, presentation slots up until uh, 6.30. Um, as I said, we're going to be finishing a little bit early uh, because the penultimate presentation presenter, unfortunately, is unwell. And then next week we have watch parties to view the asynchronous presentations and a final panel session um, on Friday the 21st where we can meet back here and reflect on what we've seen and heard. Um, so that's all um, I have to say. That's plenty. There's just some references at the end of the slide, so you'll be able to access those. Um, there's, you'll also be able to access um, all of the presentations and the recordings, um, and I'm sure Pete will, will share with us at some point how we can do that. I'm not going to put him on the spot now. Um, but um, I'm 9.51, so I need to stop. Thank you very much, everybody, uh, for coming along. And I'm now going to hand over to Rich Bale, who's going to be our chair for our first session on performance improvisation.